We have so many different waves in San Diego. You need to have all these different boards to access them properly. So the fact that I build fishes and eggs and long boards and big boards, I think it's its own uniqueness compared to like what everybody calls the retro modern futuro movement or whatever it is. Uh, for us, it's just, that's what you grow up surfing here. The three legends that we all grew up around were Skip Fry, Joe Roper, and Bert Huffman. Every day you have these legends around, just I mean, surfing, you know, keeping you in line as a grommet, making you do work for him or whatever. It was, yeah, really a, an amazing time. If there's one guy that I wanted to like be on the, his side was Joe, right? Because he's intimidating, gnarly, pipeline, big rock, rah. PB Point was really heavy when I was a Grom. I mean, guys threw rocks, tennis rackets with rocks, broke fins out. Skip brought me up there, but even getting that introduction didn't mean shit to any of those guys. <laughs> I, mean, I still go out to win and see, and Joe gives me that call the Roper Eye, you know? What are you doing out here, you know? <laughs> Nowadays, it's like a free for all. If you pay for your surf diva lesson, you can go surf anywhere you want. But yeah, all good. <laughs> it's a double edged sword because I'm trying to sell surfboards, but it's hard sometimes. He's just a unique in individual, never stretches, eats fast food, and yet he'll go out and just rip. He's just super humble and just minds his own business and does his thing, but his aura is just massive. Hey, hey. Shredderama. That's it. It's gonna be fun out there. Skated around the lot. You did already? Check out the new thing. So Skip skateboards now before every mission to get his hips and knees and everything going. All right. Whoa. Oh, Whoa. it's so loose. And no wheel bite? No, no wheel bite at all. Wow. Epic. Oh, it's even looser than the other Than one. they were? Oh, man, it's just like up and down the lot. You can go all around the lot and never stop. All right, perpetual motion. And here's this guy that surfs three hours every day, and he, at that time, was in his 60s, you know, and I'm like, wow. Everybody revered him and respected him, and he's the man. I thought that was a pretty cool lifestyle, you know? Just wanted to follow that suit. When I was 16, my dad, you know, we'd, he'd pick me up and I go, oh man, look, there's Skip. And he goes, okay, well, I'll go ask Skip. And he gets out of the truck and I'm like, uh, oh, don't do it, you know, don't ask him. And he asks him and Skip's just like, no, can't, I got burned, I'm not, nope. And then like two years later, we just kind of develop a little semi-friendship in the water and then I ordered my first board and then uh, he called me, hey, why don't you come down, I'm shaping your board tomorrow. Let's go for a surf and then we'll build your board. So I would hang in there and, and just watch him and go home and repeat it. Definitely afraid of like interrupting him or ever getting him on a bummer. Like, you do it in here again, kid. Somebody's gonna have to follow in Skip's footsteps. I, I would say between him and Bob Nitzpin shaping Skip replicas, those two are, are key players, you know. Some people just have a knack for it, you know, they just got to see the basics and then they'll run with it, you know, that's kind of what I did. I was just hanging around it like he did, you know. I don't think I ever actually thought I was mentoring him. I mean, it was just kind of happened. You just watch it and then after a while you kind of get a feel for it just by watching it, you know. He's about probably as close to me as anybody. My one friend, Chris Gentile, has a custom. Oh yeah, Chris owns Pilgrim Surf Supply, by the way. Uh, he's up. It's a, a Fish Simmons, but we're modifying it based off feedback from Chris. So it'll be a, an updated version of a model that I've built quite a bit of for guys out there. A little thinner, a little narrower, a little more rocker. Should be good. Skip writes Hey Nalu on his boards, which may, means wave slider from the ancient Hawaiians. And then Thomas Campbell, one of his famous quotes is trim your life away. So sliding the glide is just going with the flow or, or whatever comes your way. You just, everything's meant to happen, you just have to go for it. So I just write that as my little tagline on all my boards. Getting a rhythm of, of finishing boards in the morning 
and then roughing boards out in the afternoon. Because when you come in in the morning, you're fresh. So your eye, like for all the detail work, which is like 90% of the board, um, do that in the morning, then go have lunch, come back, you know, put on Metallica, kill them all, and then rough out five for the next day. We started in 2006 and I worked at restaurants for three years. And then a couple of times I'd quit thinking I was busy enough on the board side and then get behind like two months and three months in rent. I'd come home, there'd be eviction notices. Like, I'm like, oh man, yeah. Like the full entrepreneurial struggle. Definitely there's been low points. <laughs> like, like having no money, but having a quiver of fries, but not wanting to sell them. I'd never sold them. So I'd go behind and rent. Most guys sold them, <laughs> I didn't. <laughs> The hardest part in the beginning was just getting orders, trying to build a brand, get a website, trying to do it legitimately and get a business license and pay taxes and, you know, balancing cash flow to be able to buy 25 blanks and shape them and get them to the glasser and make sure they get shipped. I'm not just building boards for San Diego. There's waves everywhere. He went to Bali and shaped some boards. He's got a great relationship in Spain. In Japan, there's another account. He's got a great account there. That's, that's business. A huge amount is not tapping into poaching into a local community that is established with their Hank Warners and Skip Fries and their Mids Pins and all these guys. He's not going in and catching them at their door going, oh, I'll build you a board. He gives back to the community. He serves very, very well. He's pretty humble for where, he, where he's at, but he's not afraid to, to step up and, and, you know, to stake his claim now. He's, he's worked hard for it. and. He's, again, he's trying to grow. So, you know, it's, it's time for him to, to put himself out there a little bit more. I'm just proud of the kid. That's all I can say. He's a good one. I don't think there's any other person that grew up how I did and, and where I did and with whom I was surrounded with that got to be educated by all the older generations of surfers that we have here. So I guess for me, part of it's just to maintain that, that San Diego design thread, and, and that PB soul, you know, like see a guy on an eight foot egg just standing there doing nothing but with style, like that was what you grew up with. That was a soul surfer, you know? None of this butt wiggling, chop hopping stuff. You link your turns or, you know, you do S turns, you don't pump. Uh, I, all that kind of defined a soul surfer. I'm stuck at the shop and it's all dusty. A guy came to the door and said, go to Rusty. <laughs> Went down to the ocean and it was blown out. I sat with my friends and all I could do was pout.